Dragon Stogma 2? <laughs> More like Dragon Stogma Remake or Reboot if you will. This game doesn't feel like a sequel at all. Really feels like a remake to the original but doesn't even come close to hitting the bars that the original set. Of course I appreciate you being here watching this video but I your host Gibby will not shield this but tis not a bad game. Tis not a trash game at all. It's actually okay. It's actually not bad, especially as I got further into the game. Yes, I had a hard time in the beginning, but as I got further into the game, it was not bad, but it's not as great as everyone is saying it is. I believe it's actually decent and it has something going for it, but it dropped the ball very hard. So let's just get straight into it without further ado. Oh man, hearing this song for the first time playing this game really stuck with me. This song makes me feel like you're about to start a great heroic journey into a magical medieval fantasy land. And then you have Dragon's Dogma 2. Playing the most generic music I've ever heard in my life. I mean, the intro already gave you a soulless impression at the start, which is not a good sign at all. Also, look at the how generic the UI is compared to the original. With the dragon breath consuming the option after clicking on them. I mean, these are the small things, but I pointed this out because this really captured my attention the first time I've played the game. So let's talk about the character creation real quick. I do believe it is a very big improvement from the original because it is so detailed. For example, you can change the size of your nose, the size of your nose bridges, the uh, how far your nose go up, how far your nose go down, how far your lips go up, how wide your lips get, and all of these little details. You can even change the sharpness of your nose. You'll be surprised how a bridge, just a small tweak in your nose bridge can change somebody's face. You can change the size of your torso, your shoulder width, how far it is up, how far it is down, how far back it is, like so many things, your thighs, you can change so many things in this character creation, which I love. I do have a problem with the character creation though, when it comes to making a female. I believe a female body I think as everybody should because science shows that it is different from the male body but not to Capcom for some reason because the female looks exactly well when it comes to the posture it looks exactly like the male's posture which is so odd and bizarre because in the original you could tell the female body from the uh, male body because the female had a stance but in this game for some reason the female has the male stance and there is no slider to make the female more feminine or more you know their stance a little bit masculine even in the original when you would put the female stance masculine you know ish it still would look female ish because <laughs> her stance was different from the male as in, 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 in Dragon's Dogma 2, Capcom decided, oh, no, there's no such thing as female stance. Now, even the walking animation for the females, you cannot change in this game, which I was hoping they would allow you to have in this game, but they do not. You still have this weird walking animation for the female, which is so weird because a female's walk is part of her. A female, that's how you know that's a female that's how you know that's a male you know so you have to look at their walking animations to know okay and i believe also walking animations could be very sexy on the female character you want to create or your pawn but to capcom they didn't seem they didn't think that was a thing i was also hoping that capcom would allow you to change the walking animation of your character 
For example, I get to either pick a certain animation that's for my character. But the only thing, again, like I said, was you get to change your posture. I did want to also change the walking animation of uh, my sprint animation or my jog animation or my jumping animation. But they didn't allow that. I was hoping, you know, they would upgrade that in this game from the original because you couldn't do that in the original. But I was hoping they would allow you to do it in this one. But they did not, sadly. Another problem I had with this part was the hairstyle. <laughs> one in particular. And is this Miles Morales hairstyle. Mind you, this is medieval time, guys. Ancient times with dragons. And I get to create a character that looks like this. This has to be restricted. Mind you, again, this, this breaks all emergence. Especially my character that I created. <laughs> What the heck? I know you can say, oh, you were the reason why you broke your merchant, but yeah, but my God, Capcom gave me the option to have Miles Morales dreadlock with this type of color haircut. I think it is hilarious and also stupid that they allow you to have that. Dude, I I don't get this hype for this type of hairstyle ever. I've never understood it. I would never understand this hype for this hairstyle. Who is asking for this? I don't know. But at least we got a kick out of it. At least I made a memed uh, character, which was funny, made the game more funny. And I think, yeah, why is this in the game? Vocations. Now, vocations aren't a new thing for Dragon's Dogma because, again, it was in the original. But I will say they technically brought a few new vocations. I say technically because Magic Spear Hand or Mystic Spear Hand is not a new vocation. It's technically Mystic Knight from the original, but with a spear this time. I will say I do like Mystic Spear Hand because, yeah, it, it, the animations are pretty smooth. And um, you get to stun your enemy with some magical power from your spear. But I will say, I do prefer the Mystic Knight over the Mystic Spear Hand. Because the Mystic Knight felt tanky. It's essentially just a Dark Souls, you know, very tanky um, uh, character with a shield this time. So I, I do like that hybrid more from the original. Then I do the Sphere. I was hoping maybe they just keep that. You know, they keep the Mystic um, Knight and they added the mystic sphere which would be kind of cool give the player you know two different way more vocations so technically it's not new and then you have the trickster which i don't know why somebody would play as this character because you are essentially a supporting character which not so fun when your pawns are also supposed to be supporting you and they are dumb most of the time. So there's no point of playing with this one. This is why I think they dropped the ball here. Because they could have created something crazy. And something new. And something more, you know, from the old one. Or better hybrid. But not something they brought back. Um, they do have Warfarer. Also, that's another vocation. Which I don't count. Because you just play as all the vocations. In this, um, in this, vo in this vocation. And, but the downside to this one is that you're i think i believe your stats go lower um and also you also upgrade all of the vocations while you are playing this specific vocation which i think is very weird i think because well, if you're gonna have vocations you shouldn't have one that does all of them in one which is so weird to me which every player will probably pick this one because there are ways to increase your stats your health and your strength so that you could just negate all of this work of decreasing your strength and whatever your stats. So I think having this part is kind of dumb. But not my favorite one, but I will say, yeah, it's there. Now, all of the vocations are extremely slow. And I say slow, be when I get to the gameplay part, you will get it. But they are extremely slow. Um, I was thinking Thief would be extremely fast, but Thief is fast for this game. Uh, if you compare it against the original it's extremely slow you don't feel very agile sometimes it feels very sluggish and you know tanky and slow which is not what the thief is supposed to be it's supposed to be agile movement very fast um you know combat very fast 
and it's not it doesn't feel that way in this game and also the fighter is another slow one extremely slow the only vocation that's supposed to be slow is the warrior and i will say the warrior is fine in this game i don't hate it too much only thing i will say is that the original made it more satisfying when you connect hits with um enemies and there was this one um skill you could acquire that would allow you to just a uh, slam you would hold a uh, attack for i don't know 10 seconds maybe and then you would slam into the ground in a wind of a very big wind would come out of the ground just push the enemies up and fly them into the air which was not in this game which i was hoping i think you get like an uppercut in this game and a double swing i think while swinging with square you could also hold it to get a powerful swing and another problem with the warrior is it's not until you play new game plus or at least me from that experience that i finally could take hits in the old game you were really tanky your your defense was being able to take hits from other enemies and not get staggered and i would get into that in the gameplay section but the warrior was just missing that off it's not until i played the new game plus i was finally swinging and i was being fine even though i was still getting staggered uh, from time to time there is a way you could stop uh you know get less staggered um by upgrading your your equipment uh later on in the game which i didn't find until new game plus so that is the main problem there i will say the original didn't have that problem i could go in and just smite enemies you could even have uh that move that i mentioned previously fly big boss enemies which is absurd and crazy right uh, I like how the game allowed you to be extremely powerful while you're going through the game, throughout the game. Yes, you started out pretty rough with the um, the stamina, uh, but in the original, as you got into the game and played more, you upgrade everything. Yes, yes, you felt extremely powerful. And I think that's what this game was missing a little bit of in uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 or Reboot. That's what it was missing was just that satisfaction feeling. It's still there. It's just not as good as the original was. Now, when it came to the Sorcerer, I think that's another um, pretty disappointing part of the game because the original had, I think, about a lot more skills. I don't remember how many, but you had a lot more skills than this one. I think you they, they took that all the way down despite some of the um sorcerers move are not in this game i mean there are still some uh some of them like like the raining uh meteors that's still in there you got the electrics tr electricity strike or whatever that's still in this game i also didn't see that they allowed you to um give your uh enhance your vocations uh weapons with fire or electricity or holy or ice you didn't get to do that in this game which is extremely disappointing because i felt so p <laughs> when i could do certain things like that but at least they still kept some of the op uh, moves like or the skills like the meteor and stuff i do remember that being crazy op in the original i i did go back and play the original i had to which i will say my god you do feel very powerful an actual sorcerer in this game which you don't you know you kind of feel it here just it's just lacking so much in that in, in that you know that aspect i do i do see that um you could fly as a sorcerer in this game which i didn't get to get but i did see it uh in gameplays i watched um you could fly and levitate in this old game, which I, I think that's just the replacement for the double jump in the old one, which why didn't you just have both? I don't get it. Why can't we have both? Why do we have to take some away and then add this one? It's not that OP to have both. At least, you know, some of the old, uh, the other vocation can have uh, a platforming. It doesn't only have to be the sorcerer. I think you should also give you like in the original, you had double jump and the other vocations could have you know some platforming that would have been cool if it's not just one vocation that has that so i think which i think that's something they should have added all right then now let's talk about the combat now because 
I, well, this shouldn't be that long because this should be a rant almost. If it wasn't for New Game Plus where I played again, even though it shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to wait to New Game Plus in order to actually have fun in the game. But this part was extremely irritating, especially when you start the game. So I started the game with Fighter. And fighter is, like I said in the previous section, is extremely slow. Most of these vocations are slow, except for thief. Thief is fast, cons you know, compared to all the other vocations. Like I said before, warrior is supposed to be the only slow one. After that, everything else should have some type of, you know, their own thing where you get, you know, you have the fighter, you get to block yourself with a shield. The thief, you get to run around as fast to evade. Um, the warrior, you have tank, you know, abilities. So you should have something to defend yourself. Not when it comes to the fighter. The fighter, when, especially at the start, is extremely slow. The game wants you to unlock the skill where you get to parry. Which is so stupid to me because I should be able to just block myself in that automatically parry. If I block on time, it parries. But whatever, right? So you start with Thief, which is extremely slow. Um, the swinging is slow. The jumping is slow. The heavy attack is slow. It's almost the same as Warrior, technically. Literally. It's no different. The, those animation are sluggish. They don't feel satisfying at all when you connect with the... Um, the enemies, it doesn't feel satisfying. And that's most of the vocation, honestly. But the fighter is the most. So I started with the fighter. And throughout the game, you encounter a lot of enemies. A lot of enemies. And I will talk about this in the world section also. But you get staggered a lot especially by some goblins i understand the big boss enemies but why do i have to get staggered by goblins and dogs and harpies god knows the harpies are extremely annoying in this game they are way more annoying than the original in the original they were fine in this game you encounter them every second and they make them extremely annoying so you will get staggered to death by and i have multiple footage of this you get staggered to death by goblins and you have no way of defending yourself even if you block if a goblin come from behind you you get staggered you would just continue getting staggered until you die and you don't know how infuriating and annoying this part is there is no fix for this the only fix for this sometime is to run away from the enemies and then separate them even then sometime they do this leaping especially the goblin they do this leaping attack or this gliding attack that will go super far and either they'll stagger your pawns or they will stagger you which will make the game extremely annoying because the world is 10 times bigger <laughs> If the world is 10 times bigger, don't add enemies every corner of the game. And I believe they, add, they did this so that they can keep the player's attention. That is stupid. Don't go this Souls route. That is Souls mentality. I hate that this game copied Souls in that instant. And again, it had its own thing going. It had its own charm, its own little thing happening for it. Why did it have to go and copy Souls in that instant where everywhere you go, there's a bonfire you rest and you can't really heal if you keep dying in the game you can't really heal you have to rest so the healing is pointless like when you pick up some of these healing items they are pointless because you can't if your character died too many times the game has a thing where it stops your health from going further so even if you heal it won't heal you fully like there are certain healing consumables that heal you fully. The game won't let you do that. You have to rest in order to gain your health all the way back. Which I think is this Dark Souls 2 uh, copying crap. Which I hate so much in this game. I think this is one of the things that are a huge downgrade in this game. Is that is the combat part. Th choosing that as a gameplay is so stupid having bonfires everywhere where i have to rest is so stupid you do need a campfire kit as the game call it to either to even rest in some of these areas and the campfire kit is extremely heavy so if you want you could have your pawn carry it for you throughout the game so that you cannot lose it but if your pawn dies it might be over for you because sometimes some part of the world 
your pawns will fight an enemy let's say you're fighting an org or something throughout the world the org throw them off the cliff and they fall in the water you lost your pawn so if you have the if they are holding the camping kit it makes it 10 times worse when you can't rest and you have to run all the way to the city if you're extremely far all the way to the city and you can finally rest do you see where that's a problem because it's extremely that is extremely annoying guys that is souls gameplay you don't have to copy souls gameplay in the original you would encounter enemies spread it pretty good i didn't get annoyed by bandits coming out of nowhere goblins running with bandits or gang banging you most of the time you didn't have to worry about that not only that if even if you decide okay i want to skip the enemies here because i just want to get to the city and rest no they will follow you like dark souls 2 all the way there and let's say you encounter a big boss throughout the way and you can't you try to fight them the smaller enemies will follow you again and you, which will cause your pawns to aggro to the smaller enemy which would allow the bigger enemy to just down your pawns over and over and over and over which you can't do anything because you have to defeat the smaller enemies first before you destroy the big enemies which is super hard in itself that is dark soul stuff right there <laughs> if you look at elder ring the same thing enemies follow you and you know defeat you through uh why are you trying to defeat a big boss that is the stupidest thing i think this game could have done and they done it i hated the that part of the game like i said in new game plus you didn't really encounter that too well because you got stronger and your pawns i guess i don't know my pawns didn't really get stuck too hard but in the first gameplay it still happened even throughout my middle part of the gameplay or towards the end part of the gameplay. It still kept happening when I tried to run past enemies or I tried to fight enemies. I would get gang banged and raped automatically, which is so stupid. But yeah, I think that's one thing they should have worked on that they didn't really care about. All right, let's briefly touch on the enemies. Now, the enemies are the same as the original. Literally, there's no that much variety there's not that much variety i think the only new enemy i thought i saw was the sphinx and the medusa i think those are the two enemies that are new yes they are smaller enemies throughout the game i think like a slime or something that was new but after that i do not remember any i think they even took out enemies in the game i think there was like these exploding zombies in the old one which was uh it's not that I didn't come back. I think there were these skeletons. I think there are now. I think I seen skeletons and now. Maybe we should scratch that one. But th there are other enemies. I do remember fighting in caves that I do not see in this game. But there are smaller enemies. Big enemies wise, you still have the original enemies like the golem and the griffin. Uh, you still got the dragons around, which I guess is still cool. But I was hoping they would add more enemies and more things to fight which is kind of disappointing this is another disappointing part of the game which i was hoping they would change but they did not so that's that technically but you still got the goblins which are annoying um like i said in the previous section extremely annoying um uh the big enemies are still the same you climb them i think they still get the same weakness honestly like uh that lion enemy which i forgot the name of um that goat mixed with the uh serpent tail enemy that one you they still have the same weakness still um you jump on them you hit them blah 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 you still got the sorens i believe the name is uh those lizard looking things you still got those uh, which I guess is fine. But after that, again, the disappointing part of this uh, game, another disappointing part is that the lack of enemy variety. While in the original game, I do remember you had like a Hydra. Um, there was this like uh, worm looking enemy you could fight. There was this bird dragon <laughs> that you could fight. Uh, oh, that's something I forgot to point out. There's like this ghost enemy at night, which I think was in the original one too not new but i did forget to say that it's still in there but yeah i do remember that old oh the game had enemies that you could fight that are not in this one and i will say do you remember the soundtrack for some of these bosses That 
is something else that is that is missing out of this game so much potential they could have remade the hydras boss fight do you remember that one that was like the org boss fight the soundtrack was amazing which they did not bring back actually let me stop myself i do know that they brought some of the old soundtracks back but you had to pay for it that is something i didn't talk about which is the microtransaction which is so stupid you have to pay it's just like it's just capcom all over again you have to pay for the original soundtrack bro instead of you know giving it to us and then you giving us a remake that we could a remake soundtrack that we could hear nope all of the soundtrack in this game are extremely boring extremely generic <laughs> you know just like the uh the opening scene of the game generic stuff guys generic stuff nothing worth writing home about i think that's gonna be the mo one of the most forgetful things of this game is the soundtrack nobody will remember they none of the soundtracks are good at all another small little detail i did notice in the original is after you defeated all of the enemies they, some of them would decay the golem would like evaporate uh you know the rock pellets would like evaporate everywhere if you would kill an enemy that have flesh it would decay i think that is some of the cool this is what i mean about the older one having its little charming things that is such a cool thing that it had in the original yeah they did not bring that back in this game which is i think again i noticed some of these smaller things because that i think that's what makes up some of these games that's what you remember that's what gaming is all about that's, these are some of the memorable things in this game not so much i do remember also that the golem had this like glowing cracks around him which is not in this game's one either the only time you see the cracks are when the uh weak spots of the golem after that it's if you remember the old one it was so cool to especially fight it at night where you would see cracks around it and it's glowing around the area that thing that's such some of the coolest thing that the original had that it didn't bring back again the decaying now it's just so soulless this is how i knew capcom was rushing some of this stuff it's so soulless the golem would fall down and like a normal you know it wouldn't even break apart it would just fall down yes you could break its arm off even then you would think <clears throat> you'll break the arm off the rock pellets will fly off no that's not back and if you remember even in the original when you would kill a cyclops it would fall down it would shake the area that's not in this game some of the soul things are not in this game which is so disappointing i think you might call it nitpicking but it's something that was in the original that you could tell Capcom didn't really, you know, they were rushing this and they didn't bring back. Another thing that really captured my attention when I went back to play the original is the world, guys. The world, Dragon's Dogma 2's world is 10 times bigger. And I think that goes with the enemy thing. I think that's also what makes this game slightly downgrade is because as you traverse throughout the world, you fight the same enemies over and over. That That's how you know it gets really tiring when especially that this is why they should have added more variety is so, so this problem won't occur is so that we can have more things to fight instead of trying to fight the same thing. At some point, you're just going to run past enemies when you already have enough XP and you're high level. There's no point of you fighting some of these enemies. And it's why replayability is also a little low. It's because there's no, not that many enemy varieties and not no secret enemies to go back to or more enemies to fight. If you weren't strong enough, you play again and you fight them. Th that's one of the things. So the world really captured my attention the first time I played the original. I mean, I... It is very hard to describe unless you play. Dragon's Dogma 2 still have this medieval, you know, thing going for it, which is good. I shouldn't have to give it that credit, but it is this modern time. I will give it that credit. It still have the old timey speak. Uh, the attires of some of the NPCs are still old timey, which is good. It's supposed to be that way. Yes, I did notice the... um 
diversity around the world don't think i forget about that i did see that the force diversity everywhere and literally everywhere you go is some sort of black dude uh there no asian surprisingly in this game despite it is made by asians which is insane but yet it has a lot of if it's filled with a lot of black people everywhere right there's also another um race that's in there which is the cat race i forgot the name of them by the way you could tell capcom just wanted to add a different race in the game they did not really put any thoughts into the cat people because some of them still have the modern haircut that is in the game i did speak about this in the character creation but some of them still have the miles morales haircut some of them still have the same voice acting as the normal human being which is so disappointing they could have went in depth give them their own language maybe they experienced some type of you know i don't know discrimination or something give them some story Capcom did none of that. They were just they were just there as a you know more things to play as. You can play as them. They, there's nothing different. I think there's one air one part of the game where maybe yeah you use the CAD people to get a vocation, but after that, that's it. They're not you could tell Capcom just rushed and put them in there as a thing to say, oh, we added more things into the game. Well, they have no in-depth story. They have no. They they don't have their own language, their own voice acting, their own way about them. They act the same way as the human beings, which is so disappointing, I think. But yes, back to that. I think you know going into the first Grand Soren city in the original game really really shines, man. Imagine if we had this technology that we have now for the old game, how much NPCs they could have added throughout the uh that city of Grand Soren. God, man, I think and also the soundtrack throughout this game traversing throughout the world is just so beautiful. The lighting is so beautiful in this game. God, I think just i think that's what really made this game for me i'm not going to lie it's it's it brings so much you know art to throughout when you're traversing i think that's what really kept me running throughout the world if the world was really dull and boring in the original there's no way i would have sat there and tried to run throughout the world all the time i do remember also actually before i get into that yes the soundtrack There's also this one area in the old game that is this like um very uh is this a uh, forest I believe and god knows it is so beautiful it looks so good especially in the daytime dude I will provide um evidence instead of me just talking the whole time it is the game just has that art to it while in the in this reboot or remake god i sometimes it looks pretty good you know just because it kept that medieval you know way about it but after that it doesn't have that art that that old one used to have and that's something i don't see many uh reviewers pointing out that, that the old game had going for it is this art style and this soundtrack for it and the sound design for the game the lighting god it's so good i think that again that's what held the game <laughs> solid for me the old game i think another thing about the original game was the characters the characters were extremely memorable and they were they had a charm to them and that's another thing i didn't speak about is the voice acting in dragon's dogma 2 it is not that good though the political situation is stable at present much blood has been spilled between Bermond and his neighbor in the past. There's no end of requests to seek out new knowledge of the dragon these days. I don't see how some old scrawlings will thwart a beast what can't be held by stone walls. Four-legged creature. But when our hero drew his blade, unto him a demand was made. Perhaps no doubt we were filled you. with fear and awe, with trepidation, with despair. And why? 
because mankind air fears that yes they still have this old timey you know uh medieval speak but it's just bad guys it's like it, it's 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 not trash but it's just lacking and missing something that the original did the original had you know their voice acting had energy to it it had life and it it was charming and memorable even the npcs throughout the you know cities you would encounter they didn't have some of them didn't have main quests but they were still you know charming to those this lady with a red dress that i would see walking around the uh city grand soren all the time which she didn't have but like two dialogues but she was memorable she was cool to you know she just you could she caught your attention but in dragon's dogma 2 there's there is none of that oh i, I can't think of any npcs i'll be like oh that's memorable i think that's another thing that's you know missing from this game that is a disappointment the main characters also are not memorable god i don't know uh <laughs> i think you got the black dude which is named brent i think i do remember there are a couple waifus in this game which are they're pretty cute but they're not too memorable i think eureka is pretty memorable there's another one you get to sleep with which you don't encounter again uh which is pretty uh, she's all right i guess but it's like if you remember in the original there was a lot of uh memorable ones like madeline you had celine and uh, we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> you had eleanor you had mercedes which was supposed to be casca clone almost you had queena kina whatever however you pronounce that fornival i mean there are so many uh memorable characters in the old one and they had their own little charm to them shoot even this uh the um jester that was in the uh in the grand soren part of the game by the duke was pretty cool i mean yes it was awkward and you know you could consider it corny him putting a hat on you if you remember the original if you played the original he would put a funny hat on you you couldn't take off <laughs> while you inside the uh the palace which is you know charming this game has none of that i think you met a few people which just wasn't they weren't memorable at all I think I remember doing a quest for this little girl where you went around picking up flowers for her. That's the only thing I could say I probably remembered, which is not an interesting quest at all. That's another thing. The NPC's quests aren't really that interesting, if I remember correctly. Like they, they were really not. The main quest is really what is really interesting. Most of the other ones is go here, transport this guy here. I was hoping again, this is what dragon's dogma 2 would bring to the table is better meaningful side quests the only side quest that is probably very good is the sphinx one where you have to go and get riddles all around the you know this area for just to unlock the boss which is cool i think that's cool it could have added more to the game for that that's a missed opportunity right there to add more little side quests around the world that would make the player want to go and search things but you know the NPCs aren't really that well. <laughs> I remember even the Duke in the old one was pretty cool and memorable. Even towards the end when you would, um, uh, I, I got the weird ending where I killed the dragon. He would turn old because he wasn't arisen himself, which was kind of cool. It was cool to see. And he would have all the, uh, uh, you, you would fight him. That was another secret boss that you couldn't get if you would have got a different ending. Um... You know, and then he'll send guards after you when you go back to Grin Soren. Even Grin Soren after, you know. <laughs> dude, that is something I didn't talk about also. Even Grin Soren after you defeat the dragon, the world, how it looks. Looks like the dragon's ashes is falling. It's green. God, I'm telling you, the original game, go back and play it. It had some stuff going for it. Some cool little things going for it. If you haven't played the original play it it's actually worth it it's cheap why not right so you know in this game not too many memorable bosses i know i've said this a million times that is just something that it's lacking now when it came to the story i will say not that good i will say that about the first one too it wasn't that good but 
at the beginning i would say i would say towards the end i think is when everything started you know capturing my attention throughout the game when you're doing things for the story not really that good and i'm talking about the original and it's the same case for this it's for dragon's dogma 2 also not very good i think all of the endings are also very boring and if we're talking about i something i forgot to talk about is the dragon you can defeat this and mind you this is the main boss <laughs> you can defeat him super fast in uh in dragon's dogma 2 one thing I notice about if I'm comparing the two bosses and uh, from Dragon's Dogma 2 and Dragon's Dogma 1. It has nothing, you know, I think the bosses from Dragon's Dogma 2, at least the end boss, has nothing on the original boss. Again, this is why I believe you should go play the original. Because I think the dragon in the original was very intimidating. That voice acting is beautiful it is very good i know it sound like i'm over hyping i am not whoever that voice acting is that voice actor is for the dragon it is beautiful the set piece for the boss in boss fight for the original is beautiful you're running around you're jumping while the dragon is following you the dragon is chasing you the dragon is breaking a bridge there's like this bridge you will traverse to the dragon is breaking it. There was one part where the dragon was sitting on top of some type of heel. Dude, you have to go play the original. The original, that, that boss fight setup is beautiful. The boss fight is beautiful. Unlike this game, Dragon's Dogma 2, the boss fight is so bad guys i think that's another disappointment of this game it had potential it still had this vo good voice actor yes it wasn't up to par to the old one but the voice actor was fine just the boss fight setup was very boring once you catch the dragon on the ground you can easily defeat it very fast but sometimes he would fly all the way up and he would come back and you know it would would stall the game very you know a lot it would make the boss fight extremely boring because he would just fly most of the time and you were the only time you could get him was when he was on the ground there was one part in the original where you would have to run uh, up this um structure and there was this gun uh, waiting there for you on this arrow. I forget the name of it, but I'll put it on the screen. It was waiting for you and you would strike the dragon. And then, you know, there's this one part where it was very cinematic, man. I think that's what I'm trying to explain. It was extremely cinematic. And I think that's what Dragon's Dogma 2 was missing. I do know, you know, there is a secret ending to Dragon's Dogma 2, which is, it looks pretty cool. I think it ends the cycle. Which is not a bad thing because in the original, the cycle would continue to go over and over and over and over. In this game, the cycle would end if you get the true ending, which that's when the game finally shows you that it's Dragon, Dragon Stogma 2. Which I think is so stupid to me because what the? why couldn't that just be the normal ending? And then you have cool little secret endings throughout the game. Why did that have to be the end, you know, the part? But, you know, that's just a little bit about that part but i think the secret ending was pretty good um it was all right still the same boss fight most of the time uh throughout the time but you do see grand soren again they do show you grand soren but it's downfall which is i guess kind of cool and not as visually pleasing as i wanted it to be but it was i mean at least they brought that part that you could tell that's where they put most of the you know the time uh into but again I was hoping the boss fight in the story would be something and you I didn't explain the story because it's fairly simple. Uh you do quest quest quest, you get a dragon blade, you either fight the dragon or you don't fight the dragon. Those are the two. And I think also another thing that was uh part of the original that I really liked also was the introduction to the game. You get to fight as an old Arisen, which was kind of cool. Uh, it gave you all the mechanics of the game right there. Uh, and, you know, and it was a cool intro to the game. Yes, that Hydra part where you would walk a long way 
was boring but after that the game was picked up but you know that intro to the game was very good unlike dragon's dogma 2 you have a walking segment you fight a medusa that doesn't even attack you at all <laughs> and you just jump off a bridge uh and then a uh, griffin picks you up you know it, it wasn't good at all <laughs> i would say again the original really captured your attention this is what i mean about this being a d make uh you know downgrade d make is because it didn't do too much better than the remake and this in the old game yes it added a few uh tweaks here and there that were good i didn't mention them but the older game just had it was more memorable this game will be forgotten if i'm being honest with you it will be and i think that is the problem of dragon's dogma 2 and another thing that made it a remake is that you the game brought back all the old stuff everything like the armor and the weapons they brought everything back they didn't really add anything there are a few armors that are new considered new but they didn't add really anything and by the way i did see that they have some of the sexy armor which is so bizarre to me that you wouldn't you allow us to uh, have all these sexy armors for the women but yet you don't allow me to change the women's stance in their posture and make them more feminine that is so odd to me i guess that's a fan service honestly because it didn't make sense that they took out all of that stuff and yet they brought some sexy armor into the game and by the way the armors were more artistically pleasing in the old game and that's what i i mean about this new engine also yeah the armors are pretty cool still but i think they were more pleasing they are more bulky in this game also but they were more pleasing to the eye more artistically uh more artistic in the um older game i will say not a big deal but uh, that's something i do want to point out that i've seen throughout my both playing both games and again yeah that's what makes it a remake most of the things are back literally everything every armor you would get in even the in-game armor you know <laughs> it's the same thing brought back to the game one thing i didn't notice also is like if you would end in the original game if you would end your um your game with a certain armor it would fully upgrade that armor which was very cool to see you know, it was like it would have like a dragon stamp on there, which was cool to see that it would upgrade the, all of it, which was cool. It would upgrade the weapon also, which is also cool. And I think that's something that they could have brought back into this game, which they didn't. Another thing I've seen that they didn't bring back was uh, that you could sit down your pawn. Your pawn throughout this game has this problem where it will um, turn on you for some reason. I don't know why that mechanic even came to the game i think that was not it was not a great idea but it would turn on you it would be rude it would do its own thing it would get itself killed most of the time which is annoying i didn't really experience that throughout the game because most of the time i would my pawn would probably fall into water and i'll reset it so it would go back to normal but i do know that's in the game in the old game you could sit down your pawn and tell them they're talking too much because sometimes if you don't pick a certain things for your pawn like inclination for your pawn they will become almost god of war ragnarok characters annoying almost but in the old game you could sit them down and tell them what they're doing wrong if they're talking too much if they're doing this then doing that yes it wasn't super detailed but there was a little thing that was in the old game that you could do another thing i noticed in this game that's not there is the infinite um crystal or infinite stone that you could have in the old game uh, which allow you to teleport infinitely while in this game you have to pay 10,000 almost a lot of money and, and, and it's also finding those stones are extremely rare which is so stupid for a game that you're supposed to be traversing after traversing after traversing there should be a reward to the player to get something you know that allowed them to tra to fast travel constantly instead of having to buy a fiery stone or whatever it was named called in the old game also you would be able to find them more frequently in this game not so much 
uh, it, it just it was just not there. You have you would have to keep buying it. And I think in the original it was a lot better, and you could where you could travel infinitely. And another thing I didn't notice from Dragon's Dogma two that didn't come into Dragon Star or that was in Dragon's Dogma one that didn't come into Dragon's Dogma two was that you could some of the NPCs that you would help they would end up helping you. They would end up coming back later on in the game. For example, there was this guy that would ask you to go find this um, long lost ancient book for him. If you skip out on that quest, which you would get locked out of the game, which also is a bad thing throughout both game. You would get locked out of quests also. You would get locked out. So then the game, you know, if you did the quest, he would come back and aid you against this like griffin uh, fighting uh boss boss fight in the game which was very cool i think that's something that didn't bring back in dragon Sogma 2 which should have been in here one thing i was hoping they would change also is the save system that is another problem i think with the game that they brought back for some reason so in the original you would save your game normally but the problem is you don't have individual saves so sometimes the game would override well sometimes all the time the game would override the previous save but what if i want to go back and do something redo something you can't do that in this game so that's something i was hoping they would change in uh dragon's dogma 2 but they brought the same crap back which is so stupid it's like they didn't hear anything i don't know if anybody was complaining about it honestly but i was hoping dude Give us individual saves. You have this new game. Man, give us individual save. You don't have to bring back the same old crappy saving system, which is so sad. With that being said, I think that is all of it for Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, should you buy this game if you're asking me that question? $70? No. I think what you should do is right now get the original one cheap. Play that one test it out play it out and then whenever this goes on sale you would also you could also play it it's not a bad game like i said before it is not a bad game it's not trash it has potential but the thing is you could tell capcom was rushing everything and didn't really bring back the soul that they had before like for example they brought this gay microtransaction i know i didn't talk about that but the thing is, it's because that's what Capcom do. And uh, they, they've been doing this for all of their remakes, which is still scummy. I'm not giving them the excuse of saying, oh, just because it's Capcom, dude, you should accept, expect it. No, it's still scummy. It's still stupid, especially where you're giving players edge over other players that have to grind. Like, for example, you can buy like a whole kit that give you like a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of consumables that the player would have to go searching and go, you know, paying gold out of their own gameplay just to get while somebody else just get to buy it and also making the player purchase the music in the game the original soundtrack is the stupidest thing when i can just go listen it for free and i can go play the original game for free and uh you know get in get the same a better better boss fight in a better soundtrack that makes what type of sense to me it doesn't make sense at all and this is why you know it, it was so funny when the shields would shield this game and they would not tell you about the microtransaction at all they would just skip over that oh i didn't get it no there are microtransactions you have to say the microtransactions are in the game for the people that are not going to buy it day one they need to know a do i want to support this or not so tell them there are microtransactions in the game and also tell them the microtransaction is not all is not game breaking. It's not something you truly need. They added it as a thing to help the gamers make the game easier for game. It's like this. Let's say Elden Ring gave uh, the uh, player uh, torrent as a thing or at least, you know, gave torrent triple jump or something like that uh for day one buyers or whatever if you would buy that a pack or something like that let's say you know if you played Elden Ring, so it's something like that just to help the player you know bet uh uh traverse throughout the world better and have an edge over people that are going to play the game fairly or without all the microtransaction yes it's scummy not taking that away 
but you can't also over exaggerate and say it's game breaking like call of duty like it's a you have a gun that you can you know purchase or whatever that's better you know better than what people will play with even though it's not a multiplayer game but that's that right there but yeah so you know capcom didn't really really do too well with this game i believe they dropped the ball honestly so just wait for it to go on sale and then you buy it is is worth playing yeah it, you could play it i'm not going to lie i really enjoyed my time um especially going uh especially when i figure out what to do later on yes the first part of the game i had a hard time but after that it was fine but i will say the original i see why people like the original because it's truly good it's truly memorable it has its own thing going for it it's charming it's artistically pleasing gameplay is pretty good um it's satisfying yes i could see why somebody will you know play the original or at least say the original is one of their favorite games i could see why because i had to go back and play it and i think that's what some of these uh reviewers didn't do they did not play the original i played the original just to see and i seen you know and you if you were in my live stream you could see what i was talking about the game had something going for it and i think dragon stogma 2 was something that it was supposed to carry that and add more onto that but it did not. It was. It is technically a remake. Really is because it's it's allowing new players to not go back and play the old one and just play this one. You don't really need to play the old one to play this one technically. So it is a remake, technically. So yeah, I think they really dropped the ball. Um, but the game is still is still pretty good. I'm not gonna say it's trash. I can't say it's trash. If I say it's trash, and I will be lying myself. But it's pretty good. So. Thanks for watching. Also, um, probably it's probably too late to release this uh, <laughs> this review anyway, but I released it anyway. Um, hopefully you liked or whatever. Um, do what you got to do. I'm sure I'm not going to be in the algorithm. I haven't uploaded in like months, but it is whatever. Uh, I uh, upload now. Hopefully you like. Hopefully you at least understood what I was trying to say and you got uh, you know this far. Thanks for watching. And yeah, that's going to be it for now. I think I'm still going to work on my original project. I will release that. I am nearly done. I will release that. Um, and then, you know, we'll go forward from there.